Mm-hmm. 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 Uh, well, okay, cover this. No, I'll keep it simple. Focus, Curdy, focus. Okay, firstly, I just have to give you some definitions. Um, does anyone know what a polynomial... Where's Joseph, by the way? No. Does anyone know um, what a polynomial is? Huh? Oh, good. Look at you all using your English. Poly is many and number, most number. Oh, yes. Your English teachers be so proud of you. Uh, yeah, not too far off. Polynomial is any function that looks like this. You have a number, a zero plus another number, x plus another number, x squared, all the way up until some power, like, for example, xn, maybe. So, for example, a quadratic is a polynomial. Would a cubic be a polynomial? It would be. What else would be a polynomial that we've studied? So, look, here's an example. This is a polynomial. Yes? This would be a polynomial. That'd be a polynomial. They're all polynomials, okay? A linear, quadratic, cubic, they're all polynomials. What is a rational function? A rational function is just equal to a polynomial divided by a polynomial. For example, 4x squared plus, plus 1 divided by x cubed, as an example. That's a simple poly, uh, rational function. Now, here's Joseph. Come on, hurry up, Joseph. Why are you late? Oh, uh, way off. Right. Um, so, what we're going to look at today is how to integrate some examples of rational functions. So, that's just vocabulary to begin with. So, let's have a look. There's four types here. So, first example. Or do you need another minute to write this yeah, down? Yeah. Come on. Yeah. You will write very slowly. Come on. Okay, first example now. So you want to integrate something like minus 8x plus 6 all over minus 4x squared plus 6x plus 5. Got that? Bring that phone up. Yep, get the phone. Okay, can I get the charger? Nope, nope. I cannot believe you went down to charge up your phone in the middle of me explaining something new. <laughs> I can't believe it. You like saying to me, my phone being charged is more important than listening to this right now. No, no, you'll just make it worse if you continue talking. So give me that. Yep, we'll let the battery run down there. Maybe if I have some videos playing, it'll run down quicker. All right, so to solve this type, now, the technique is what we did this morning, but what's really important is you must spot that the derivative of the denominator is equal to the numerator. So what's the derivative of the denominator here? It is minus 8x plus 6, which is the numerator. When this happens, substitution works really well here. You make u equal to the denominator. So you get du dx 
equals minus 8x plus 6. So du over minus 8x plus 6, that equals dx. And just like earlier, these get subbed in. So on the top you get minus 8x plus 6 over u. And then here you get du over minus 8x plus 6. They cancel just like before. And you're left with 1 over u du. Now why is 1 over u du integrated? What is it? Log u. Log u plus c. c. And the u here is, uh, well there it is on the top of the screen, minus 4x squared plus 6x plus 5 plus c. So that's that one, okay? But you kind of saw that earlier. And the second example would be similar. Example 3 and 4 would be different. So if you can write that down. Down? So this is well, that's just it. Yeah. This is for the case from the. Uh, hem. Oh, yeah, sorry. No, it goes. No, don't go in the bin. Don't worry. Let me help you. Now, what's in your one? This better be your medicine. Looks like a doctor. Sorry. Okay. I don't think medicine comes in latte form anymore. Did you write that down? Next example. Six X minus seven all over you see, say you your mistake was you should have left the lid on top and said it was your medicine. <laughs> yep. Yep, you should have kept the cover on top and you should have said it was your medicine, you see? Just like Joseph earlier, you need to pick up these things, you know? Yeah. Okay, this one here, um, again, the top is not the derivative of the bottom, but that's okay. When you have a linear over a linear, it will always work to make u equal to the denominator as well. So actually the same technique as example one. Although something slightly different happens here. Uh, so what is du dx here? Two. two. So what is dx? It is du over two. So this now becomes six x minus seven over u times du over two. Now, this is a problem, because you need just u, not x. So how can we deal with this? Who remembers this? You replace the x by using this formula here. So up the top here, you can say u plus 9 over 2 equals x. So you can plug that in for the x. So you get a half du u 6 u plus 9 over 2 and um, minus 7. Alright, we have to do a lot of cleaning up here. I multiply in the 6. Well, no, actually 6 over 2. 3. So I multiply the 3 in. 3u three plus 20... Oh, not 20. No, yeah, 27 minus 7 all over u. That's right, isn't it? 6 divided by 2 is 3. 3 times 9 is 27. 7 is there. Half is there. U is there. Okay. That's a half. 3u uh, plus 20 
over u du. All right, who remembers what happens next? What happens here? You can separate it. So here you get 3 u over u plus 20 over u do you, which equals a half 3 plus 20 over u do you. Now we can integrate here. What's the antiderivative of 3? Antiderivative 3u. 1 over u? Log u. Log u. Plus c. So that equals 3 over 2u. What do we say u was? Uh, 2x minus 9. Plus 20 log 2x minus 9 plus c. 10. 10. 10. Uh, oh, sorry, the half needs to go in there too. Thank you. 10. Okay, do you need me to scroll up to the top for this one? No? Okay. It's in Arabic. Mm -hmm. I can see there's a tweet from Amjad. <laughs> Would that be Amjad in intake two? No. no. I guess I guess there's I guess there's more than one Amjad then, huh? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Hmm. Do what? Oh, that's just me getting what a formula for x because I need to substitute it in here. Replace that x. I repl no, there's no cancelling here. Yeah. Do you mean go down? Well, that's the end, like. That's a 10 there, yeah? Got it? Yeah, okay. Next example. I need to give you a result that you will need to use for the next two examples. So, so far we have not, um, sorry. If I tell you y equals tan inverse x, what's the derivative here? One over cosine squared x. Good guess, but no, that's tan x. Tan x derivative is one over cos squared x. Tan inverse x derivative is not 1 over cos squared and not uh, that or not 1 over cos inverse, okay? So we need to do this here. We need to figure out the derivative of this. The problem is we don't know what to do with inverse. But if I put a tan on both sides, so tan y equals tan tan inverse x. Um, that makes it actually a lot easier because on the right what happens with the tan and the tan inverse? One cancel. They cancel, yeah. So you get tan y equals x. So it's like the x and y have swapped their role. Instead of y equals function of x, we have x equals function of y. So likewise swapping their roles, what would dx dy equal? So we know the derivative of tan, don't we? One over yeah, it'd be 1 over cos squared y. But we don't want dx dy, what do we want? dy, dy dx. So if I flip both sides, I get dy dx equals cos squared y. 
But what's the problem here? We don't want y in our answer. What do we want? X. X. So what does y equal? Tan inverse. Now this can be cleaned up a lot. Firstly, uh, tan inverse x is the same thing as tan inverse x over 1. And the reason I did that is to remind you, what is the definition of tan? Uh, the other one we're using the sides of a triangle. The opposite of the adjacent. Tan inverse gives me an angle. Okay, so let me draw this angle here. It's the angle you get when you draw a triangle with opposite of x and adjacent of 1. This angle here, this is tan inverse x over 1. I mean, you know this from semester 1. If this was a 3 and this was a 2, then this angle here would be tan inverse 3 over 2. Right? Nothing new there. But I now want the cosine of this angle. So what's cosine of this angle? What's cos? Adjacent over hypotenuse. So using Pythagoras, what's the hypotenuse here? 1 plus x squared. Yeah? So, right? Yes, okay. I don't know if the silence is... where. You, is the silence... I understand. Where are you going with this, Stephen? Or is there questions? Yeah, where are you going with this? All right, okay. All right. Uh, cost now. You don't understand? No. What part? The triangle. the triangle part. All right, let me rewind a bit. Back in time. All right. Don't do this. Just need to be listening. Unless you know what I'm going to do next. Don't talk. Right. We have y equals tan inverse, and then I put tan on both sides. Here's okay? Yes. Yes. Now, when I say here is okay, please do not one minute later ask me, how did I get this? Okay, I'm not going to go back again. So we're all clear to get the here. Right. I'm only going to respond if I hear no. So next, tan y is tan y, and then tan and tan inverse cancel. Okay, so that just leaves me with x. So this thing here just becomes x, and then this thing here stays the same. So we're good to hear. Right. Now, it is exactly like y equals tan x, except the x and the y have swapped places. So instead of saying dy dx, here I say dx dy. And instead of saying derivative of tan is 1 over cos squared, I now say, well, it's still 1 over cos squared, but of y instead of, of x. So it is exactly like this, y equals tan x. It's just the x and y have swapped places. It's like the x is behaving like y and vice versa. Okay. And if you want, you can write this as 1 over cos y squared like that. Okay. Now, we don't want y in our answer. But we have a formula for y. y equals tan inverse x. So I can replace my y with tan inverse x squared. Okay, now we get to the triangle. So please think very carefully. If you're using the inverse button on your calculator, will your answer be an angle or not an angle? So if you do tan inverse, sine inverse, cos inverse, is the number you get in an angle or not an angle? It should be an angle, right? So this tan inverse x represents an angle. What angle does it represent? Well, if I write x instead as x over 1, I can draw this triangle that is making this angle. The opposite is x. The adjacent is 1, because tan is opposite over adjacent. And the hypotenuse from Pythagoras will be 1 plus x squared. Okay, so if it helps even more, I'll call the angle, letter A for angle, 
And I can write this as 1 over cos angle A squared. Well, the square I put on the outside the bracket. Okay. Now, what is the cos of A in this triangle? 1 over... What is it? It's cos A. Cos is the adjacent, which is 1, over the hypotenuse. So cos will be 1 over square root 1 plus x uh, squared. Sorry, you can't quite see that. That's an x squared there. So the answer is just square root 1. Well, what's 1 over 1 over? What happens? What do you mean, where did the cos go? I just said, what is cos A? From the triangle, cos A is 1 over that. No, you're looking confused. I don't... Cos inverse. Cos inverse? There's no cos inverse. Where's the cos inverse? That's just the cos there. There's no inverse here. I flipped the table over. Ah! I'll pause for questions. So your question is what? I don't even know what your question is. What is your question? Um, do you understand why the cos a, why the cos a was replaced by this? Yeah. Okay. You can ask one of your classmates. I'm moving on. Okay. Right. So one over one over this will be square root 1 plus x squared squared which equals 1 plus x squared yes so now we have this result dx dy equals 1 plus x squared but I don't want dx dy what do I want dy dx equals 1 plus x squared. Uh, one over. Sorry, 1 over. Thank you. 1 over x squared plus 1. So this is the result. I'll write here. The derivative of tan inverse x equals 1 over x squared plus 1. That is a new result for you. But the opposite, what is the antiderivative of 1 over x squared plus 1? No, it's just the reverse of this. It's tan inverse x with the c. For example, what's the derivative of x squared? And what's the antiderivative of 2x? x squared plus c. The derivative of tan inverse is 1 over x squared plus 1. So the antiderivative of 1 over x squared plus 1 is tan inverse. And that is the result I need for the next two examples. Scroll up. How far? Here? Too far? Tell me when to stop. Or you need it there. All right. I'll give you a minute, then I'll start scrolling down. Okay, scroll down. Yes. Brandon, are you making notes? Yes. Are you really making notes? <laughs> uh, oh dear. Okay, now, no, not yet. Uh, 
Oh, uh, what's the point of anything, really? <laughs> yeah, because we can use this to... You see, the pr first example I did was, I think, a linear over a quadratic, right? The second example I did was a linear over a linear. This result would help me do a, a constant over a quadratic to integrate. The substitution technique doesn't work so well for that. Yes? You're all thinking, yes, what is the point of this, aren't you? Yeah. Okay, next example now, number three. Right, now, I, no, no, listen, listen. I don't want you to write this down because what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this using the technique from example one and two and you will see it will not work. So don't write this down. So 16 over 4x squared plus 1. I like how I said, don't write this down. It made you like, oh yeah, time to watch something. Okay, so if I say here, u equals 4x squared.